talk about the wide range of issues facing Delta and others, we're joined by Mark Hackett. Mark is an airline pilot, most recently with JetBlue, and currently a flight instructor as well. Mark, good to see you again. Good to, good to be here, Sean. Thank you for having me. Well, I hate to talk about this, because I had a lot of friends uh, emailing me over the weekend about how outraged they were and how they didn't see this coming. Why did it take so long? And I guess that's a good place to start as any. Why did it take so long? And why Delta Airlines, why was it punished by what happened with CrowdStrike, the uh, entity that released that update into Windows that caused the, the outage? And why are they dealing with this at this point? Well, you know, Sean, as the airlines uh, are seeing a very, very large uptick in travel, the complexity of their operation is uh, much more advanced. And, and things like this, as far as the, the computer outage, takes its toll on the operation. They have to use computers to not only monitor their aircraft, uh, but they have to figure out where their crews are. And uh, issues like this I have dealt with in the past. We call them IROPs, uh, irregular operations. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can recover quite easily from them, and other times you can't. You know, my heart goes out to the cabin crews that had to deal with the legions of angry people. But give us some details as to why the Department of Transportation's investigation is going to be such a big deal for Delta. Well, you know, quite honestly, I'm not sure why the Department of Transportation is even investigating. Uh, this is Really? Really? This, I mean, it's a, it's, this is a big mess. It is a, it is a big mess, um, but, uh, you know, it wasn't caused by Delta Airlines. Delta Airlines is just trying to uh, navigate this issue as best they can. They're quite a large airline, as you know, Sean. They're, right. they're huge. And uh, having crews uh, stranded, basically, all over the, uh, the world is a big issue, and it's, it's hard to recover from something like that. Yeah, okay, so the DOT's investigation is obviously also going to look uh, into CrowdStrike as well, and I'm sure to what degree did Microsoft play in this. But is it going to have a ripple effect across the airline in industry as a whole? Because we know there are very punishing measures out there, legal measures for airlines that put passengers in this kind of situation. They have to take care of them by law. Absolutely, and they should. Uh, you know, I've been in the airline industry a long time, and we've seen uh, back in back in the early days, we've seen tarmac delays uh, become forefront in front of Congress, where if you were spending too much time on the tarmac, uh, you owed the passengers the ability to get off that airplane within two hours. Uh, I think that was a great improvement in the industry. I think it helped customers a lot. Uh, but when it comes to things like this, there's when it's outside of the airline's control, we just have to kind of really revert, resort back to the fact that the complexity of these operations are such now that even a minor computer glitch could be pretty catastrophic, as we're seeing. What do you think about the optics of uh, Delta's uh, CEO heading overseas to the Paris Games? Well, <laughs> I don't think the optics are good. I think that, uh, you know, the top of the chain, especially the executive leadership, probably needs to be in place while the IBROP is being handled and managed. Um, however, I know that Delta has a lot of uh, um, uh, publicity over there. They're right now managing, and they're the number one carrier, of course, for the Olympic Games. So I think he's got a very big job to do, and, and I don't envy that right now. You know, and to put this in perspective for our global audience, Atlanta is the busiest airport in the United States in terms of takeoffs and landings. And I lived in Atlanta for a long time. Delta was basically the de facto airline I used, and I found it to be a pretty good airline. So it begs the question, how prepared are industries like airlines and travel for future snafus that come in technology? What are the strengths? What are the weaknesses? Not prepared enough, I will tell you, Sean. I mean, the systems are antiquated. The computer systems, the programs, the software that they're using is antiquated. It's a very big job to change over computer systems or software specifically for an airline like the size of Delta. Now, as you mentioned, I've been an airline uh, pilot for a number of years and a smaller airline, but we had our share of issues as well. And we learned from those issues. We were able to grow with them. I don't think Delta's had to deal with this issue mm. as much as other smaller airlines had to. So I think they're, they're starting to learn that they have to deal with this and they have to figure it out on their own just like we did. You know, one thing that got my attention earlier in the week, we heard uh, one airline expert say, you know, they have to be prepared to go to, to paper and pencil. And that's the point where you just kind of throw your hands up in the air. Man, if, if it gets, gets to that with that many travelers. So, uh, you know, technology being so Im important, are we going to suffer through more of these outages in the future? 
Well, you know, Sean, I think it shows how vulnerable we are, uh, not only as an industry, but as a community, as a people. We're, we're very vulnerable to IT and computer issues, and that's a problem. So I think we need to be focusing more on, on how we can protect ourselves against these types of vulnerabilities in the future.